G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. And today we're gonna to be taking uh, another look at the upcoming 2023 AFL Final Series with a bit of a different perspective. Obviously there's a lot of content flying hot and heavy through here in the channel. We're talking about trade stuff. I'm still whinging about how bad the Eagles are. We're firing around predictions for the upcoming finals. But in today's video, I'm gonna highlight eight players in this upcoming final series that will be crucial to their own team's success. So the format that I've done it is one player from each club. It's not necessarily the best player, but it's a player that I think will be key to their finals hopes. Obviously, it is a team game, but so many times in finals, I'm sure we can remember, you know, a player stepping up with a huge performance or even just taking a moment. That's the stuff we're looking forward to. That's what the best final series are made of. And in this video, like I said, I'm going to highlight eight players, one from each club in no particular order, who I think could be absolute game changers for their club in the upcoming final series. I'm going to start off with the GWS Giants and that player, which may not shock you, is going to be Toby Green, who really has had a sensational year. He's had sensational years a lot, a lot of the time, but obviously he's just been selected in the Australian squad of 40 should be a lock for the 22. He's averaging 18 disposals and three goals a game in 2023. And they used to say the marker of like an, an, an amazing player is someone who can average 20 and three. Well, I think 18 and three goes pretty damn close. He came fourth in the column with 60 goals, which is a fantastic effort for a non-key. If any small forward uh, or medium forward finds himself in the top five for goals, let alone kick 60, they're doing pretty well. And you know, last year that would have only been, you know, half a dozen goals off winning the column. And he was also top five in goal assists and second for scoring involvement per game. We know how good Toby Green is. I don't need to sell you on that, but I'm just sort of outlining what kind of year Toby Green has actually had. And that score involvement stat really does indicate how crucial he is to his team. On top of that, you know, another thing trawling through the stats of Toby Green this season, it's evident that he does play well in big games against big opponents. So he had four goals and 18 touches against the Blues, five goals and 19 touches against the Dogs. I know that they didn't win that game, but the Dogs weren't going so bad at the time. We were actually five goals up in that game. He had two and 27 against the Dees. Keep four goals in that tough game at GMHBA where they beat the Cats there. And in the two games, in the two Sydney Derbies combined this year, he had seven goals and 36 possessions. So we know he's a proven finals player. I always think back to that uh, elimination final in Tassie between Sydney and GWS, the one where he got suspended for staunching umpire. But this guy will be absolutely critical to his team's success this year. And I know they have got a lot of good players, but Toby Green is the difference maker. The second player I want to highlight is Melbourne's Clayton Oliver. And I obviously I'm not just going for the best player on each team but we know Petrarca, we know what he's going to bring. He is a big finals player, but I highlighted Oliver because obviously he's only played 13 games this season and since he's come back from injury, he has looked a little rusty, at least to my eye, but still averaged 30 possessions this year and he's fourth in contested possessions per game. So he still had really good numbers. The Ds have had to do without him for, what was it, two months, maybe more this season? And he's obviously one of the most important players and critical to the way they play in that Demons brand of contested fast footy. He's obviously another player with a lot of finals experience. He's not on his own there at Melbourne, uh, but he's proven playing well in finals. And you go back to that grand final and uh, when the game started to shift uh, the D's way, he was an integral part of that and he finished with 33 touches, a goal and 10 tackles. So we know what we're going to get from Petrarca, but if Oliver can match his best form, then that will go a long way to giving the D's a serious chance at the Premiership this year. The third player I'm going to highlight is Charlie Kerno. Are you shocked to hear he was on this list? What a sensational back-to-back -back Coleman effort we saw from Charlie Kerno. He kicked 64 goals last year. He's topped that up with 78. Mind you, maybe it was the West Coast Eagles that inflated the common count this year because Tex and Kerno kicked 19 each, I think, against us. But we know how good he is. He's a very unique key forward. He's unbelievably strong and, and fantastic in the contested situations. In fact, he is number one in the league for contested marks. He's also been a key factor in Carlton's success this year. Yes, they're playing pretty good team footy, but in their five loss streak this year, Kerno kicked just nine goals in total. When they went on their 10 win streak, he kicked a combined total of 35 goals. So that's an average of less than two going up to three and a half. He also kicked six goals in their crucial win over the Pies earlier this year. And you just get the sense that if uh, Charlie Kerno is nullified, that goes a long way to beating Carlton. Yes, they have other weapons, but it's quite clear that he is the number one threat on that list. And yes, he's never played in a final, but if he gets enough looks at it, I'm backing a big final series from Charlie Kerno. Next, the Port Adelaide player I'm going to nominate is, uh, it's not actually Zach Butters. It's going to be Connor Rosie. Again, it's sort of the same logic as the Petrarca Oliver comparison where we know what we're going to get from Butters. And to be fair, Rosie's been consistent as well, but but I'll make the case for why I think Rosie is more crucial in terms of having a good final series to put Adelaide's hopes. So to set the scene, he's had a fantastic year. He had 26 touches a game and a goal. Kicking 20 goals a year as a midfielder is a, is a very, very good effort. He was third in meters gained as well for the league, which is uh, an outstanding effort showing good balance between inside and outside. His output has jumped up this year. I think he had a big purple patch at the end of last year, averaged 23. That was a big jump.
jump up from the previous year, so really Rosie is starting to hit that top level potential. But this is why I think he is the crucial cog in Port Adelaide having a good final series. He is first in total turnovers in the league this year. He's also second for total inside 50s. So the importance of this is, yes, okay, so he gets a lot of turnovers. That's not a criticism on him in such, at least not in the for the purposes of this video. But my point being, his radar is gonna be critical for Port Adelaide taking their opportunities, particularly if they're playing away finals, which we know they're gonna to have to play at least two. So if he's generating as much inside 50 as he is, then it's important that his radar going inside 50 is also on point. Again, it kind of sounds like a backhanded compliment to him, but he has had a fantastic year. He's been super consistent. You have to go back to round 16 for the last time Connor Rosie had less than 25 possessions a game, and we know that he is very damaging with the ball in hand. He's also been good when the heat is on. Arguably his best game was a 23 disposal and three goal performance against the Dons. Sure, the Dons didn't get anywhere near finals really in the end, but if you watch that game, you remember how tight and hot that game was. So Connor Rosie, crucial to put out loads hopes. Next, we've got Collingwood, and I'm going to nominate Darcy Moore. Yes, not Nick Dacos, a little bit controversial. Honestly, the only reason I haven't put Dick, Nick Dacos, Dick Nacos, is the fact that he's injured at the moment. And Darcy Moore, as it stands, as I record this, things can change. I have recorded this about a week earlier than you're watching it because I'm currently in Greece, but Darcy Moore is expected to be there for week one of the finals and Dacos is a maybe. He's currently projected to make it to the prelim, but assuming there's no Dick Dacos, I'm gonna go with a skipper, Darcy Moore, who really has had a fantastic season. Another player picked in the All-Australian squad of 40 and in my mind, probably will make it in the end. But to rattle off a few stats for you, and it's hard to get good stats for key defenders, but there are some good ones. He's third in intercepts per game. He is third in contested marks, which is sensational, and fourth in the league for one percenters. He also equaled the record for intercept marks in a single game earlier this year when he had 10 against Carlton in round 10. He actually had 11, but they took one off him because it was after the three-quarter time siren. But, you know, in, in the second half of the year where Collingwood's form dipped, understandably that happens, but they went from being one of the best defensive sides in the competition to actually bottom four in a lot of stats. And so Darcy Moore organizing that defense and he himself and his own form was criticized a little bit through that period. But if they can nail that, then Collingwood are back to their best. And that's why I think Darcy Moore is the most critical Critical player for Collingwood this final series. Okay guys, before I continue with the rest of the video, I did want to bring you a message on behalf of the sponsors Game Day Squad. As you may be aware, I've started working with Game Day Squad this year and been playing along with their brand new fantasy platform, which has been unreal fun. So I've got a little message for you on behalf of them. Another reason why I love playing Game Day Squad is that they're the only ones running AFL fantasy through the finals this year. It's time to get your squads ready. This is going to be fantastic. You could be the only fantasy coach ever to win in finals footy for AFL. And if you have been playing throughout the season and perhaps you didn't go too well well this is your chance to start afresh and redeem yourself in finals and potentially still win some weekly prizes make sure you click the link in the description of this video it is the top link create yourself a team if you don't have one already or make sure you're in the true footy league then for St Kilda, the player that I think is critical to their finals hopes is their big, powerful key forward, Maxwell King. It's not Maxwell, I think it's Max. I presume, I haven't seen his birth certificate. But anyway, another player that hasn't played a whole heap of footy this year, he's really uh, battled the injury dragon. Uh, but he's played just the nine games, but had a very healthy return of 25 goals. He's actually sixth in the league for goals per game. So that's a pretty good effort coming off, you know, multiple serious injuries. And on top of that, he kicked 52 goals last year, which is a very good return in a year where the Saints didn't make finals last year. He was also top three in contested marks, which demonstrates his aerial ability. And I think contested marking is, is clearly a trait that is conducive to finals. It's going to be hot footy. There's going to be long bombs into the forward line to a pack situation. If Max King is on the end of them and he's grabbing them and he's kicking straight, then I think that goes a long way to St. Kilda at least winning a final. There were some doubts over Max King's season as recently as like a month left in the season. He did his shoulder against the Demons, was subbed out with Statless, but he miraculously came back. He had 11 goals in three games since then. That included a bag of six against the Tigers as well. He was managed in the final round of the season, but as far as I'm aware, he's ready to go for week one of the finals and it does bode well that obviously their first opponent is the Giants and he kicked four on them earlier this year so probably not that contentious a call Max King is central to St Kilda's hopes this final series then we've got the Sydney Swans and uh, they have a number of match winners on their team but I'm going to isolate someone the only person in this video who hasn't actually had an amazing year and that is Isaac Heaney the first player that came to mind for me is Sydney's best performance uh, going into this video was Errol Golden he's had a fantastic year but win lose or draw week in week out Golden has been really consistent. But for the criteria of this video, I'm thinking someone who maybe hasn't had the best year, but has enormous potential to break open not only games, but finals. That's definitely Isaac Heaney. You know what though? He hasn't had a terrible year. He still kicked 30 goals and averaged uh, 15 and a half disposals. He's six in tackles inside 50s, although he was ranked 
second last year. It's clear he's had a much stronger second half of the year than the first half. He wasn't really finding his touch, at least from a goal kicking perspective, but he's kicked half of his goal tally this year since round 17. It kind of feels like an almost year for Heaney. He did get 49 goals last year, admittedly in a team that was uh, doing a lot better last year. The Swans, obviously they made the grand final and he had 36 goals the year before from less games, but there's still time for makeup for it. And he is a game breaker, like I said, he's a sharpshooter. His goal sense is fantastic. He also flies high for contested situations. You just get the feeling he is a big game player. He did admittedly have a little bit of a quiet final series last year, but in 2021, in that final that they lost against the Giants, he did have four goals and 22 possessions. So he's not afraid of a hot contest. Therefore, Isaac Heaney, in my eyes, is central to Sydney having a chance of getting into week two, three, or beyond in this year's final series. And then finally, the Brisbane Lions, the lucky last team that I'm going to mention. Uh, their game breaker, as far as I'm concerned, is Charlie Cameron. This guy is terrifically consistent, particularly for a small forward. He's bagged 53 goals this year, which I think put him fifth in the Coleman, and then that backs up a year of 55 and 54, the two previous seasons. He's also not only hitting a scoreboard, but showing outstanding defensive pressure, and he's second in the league for tackles inside 50. Now, if you've been watching football for any period of time, you know exactly how good Charlie Cameron is. I don't really need to sell you on that, but I also think he's definitely a big game player. He kicked four goals and six goals in the two games against Collingwood this year. Four goals against Carlton. He kicked a bag of seven against the Giants. And he's gone large in finals before. Back in 2021, we kicked five goals against the Demons. In fact, I did some number crunching and he averages three goals a game in finals. And that's a pretty elite record, I reckon. We know that the Lions have match winners all over the field. I considered a number of midfielders, Lockie Neal, Josh Dunkley, of course, Joe Danaher to some extent, Harris Andrews. But this is the guy that could win in the premiership this year if he shows up in a big way in a final, because when he does show up, he is unstoppable. Anyway, guys, those are the eight players I nominated to have a big final series, or at least be really critical to their team success this September. As always though, I welcome your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Let me know anything you agree with or disagree with. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and keep an eye out for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.